Good weekend, all. I wrap in with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up, and I am back. And it is Friday, July 19th, 2024. I say back, it's so strange. I left Saturday on my vacation. I'd like to take a week, maybe a week and a half off. It'd be nice. I only go once, typically away once a year. I flew out to Montana on Saturday, and I flew back on Wednesday. Uh, Chicago had a tornado, and we never get them downtown. My home, lucky me. It centered itself here, must have been for a brief time. It took down all the trees, it took down fences. I happen to have a home in the city, I'm lucky. And uh, I could walk to the Board of Trade, I could walk to the United Center. I mean, I, I live a great area. We just got really hit. So I had to come home, put together crews, take care of it. My beautiful wife's still on vacation. She'll be there until another week and a half. So we love it there, but uh, I'm back. What can I say? And I did get the crews out and it's like it never happened. It, it's close to it, I, I can say that. Damage, yes, but I'm living here and everything's working. All right. It's interesting when I, I was gone because I'm looking at the market and wondering, are we going to get a correction of any type? And, you know, I, I kept looking and saying any company that misses just a little bit because of this rally gets punished severely on the downside. And then today the crowd strike event happens. And I'm sure you've heard about it. Uh, if you fly, if you try to do anything, trading, I understand a Schwab E-Trade was affected. I know as in the clearing side, the treasury numbers were not posting right, if you will. We had to use the, the night before's numbers at times. Uh, it, lots of impact happened. And, and the airlines especially, because once you start stacking up planes that can't go anywhere, there's a roll effect. And how do you get from where you're going to get back? Very big problem. And people are going to be stuck for days. All right. I know uh, one of the people we were with was supposed to leave today from Montana. And uh, he's actually with United Airlines. Can't get out till Saturday. And he's with the airline. That's the closest with, with all of his ties. Can't get out. All right. So everything's going to be delayed. That, that's how it works. Life. That's how it goes. All right. Now, when we look at the markets, prior to my leaving, you know, what was going on? Trump was going to be the nominee. He was going to bring back all his policies, more spending, less taxes, less regulation. Nothing has really changed. He'd have a very tough policy, uh, and people would know it, with foreign he would uh, be protecting America first. It would be rough, uh, and he thought he could end the deal in uh, Israel if he became president, the fighting that is going on there. And he thought that he could do other things uh, in Ukraine. Okay, he'll have his chance again if he becomes president. As for President Biden, unfortunately for him, the age factor is it, it's just playing every time he does anything. You saw the stumbling on the plane this week as he was walking up Air Force One. Anything he does, the man's under such a microscope that a normal stumble, oh, he's too old to do this. I, you know, I don't know the man personally. I've never met him. Can't tell you if he's old or not. I, I have friends that have. I have friends that worked in the White House. And they told me that uh, three years ago that the reason that he's always 40 minutes late is they're prepping him. They're, they're so worried about him in the background uh, for his TV appearances. And that's why they were cut short. And I have a, a good person that was there in the White House with that telling me that. Is it accurate? How do I know? I really don't know. But... Now we've seen all that's taken place, and I think each week that goes by is important. This is a big weekend. He supposedly, Biden has COVID. I've no reason not to believe it. The party is calling on him. It seems that every day that goes by, there's either another senator or Democrat that is calling on him to rethink running again. Um, and the donors, that's what you got to watch. And I heard, I don't know if it's true, we'll see the numbers, that the spigot to them is shut off. It's down two thirds instantly since the debate. And with what's going on, they don't think it'll pick up because they would like him to step back. Okay, that's what you're dealing with politically. Do I know how it'll turn out? I know as much as you do. There's no way to know that. What I do know is what happened with CrowdStrike's huge. 
all right? Uh, they are the biggest in their security end of that business. Everybody else that you look at that's, that's a player in that is a distant second and third. And the company, the problem today was from an upgrade and it's their problem and they owned up to it right away. They made a mistake. It was not a virus, it was nothing wrong. Apparently they didn't check their I's, if you will, dot them. They didn't dot their T's. They put out an update and it took it and it impacted Microsoft all over in a worldwide event. It's hard to believe one company can do that. I can understand Microsoft because probably 70% of the world computers run on a product like there, especially in the US, but this was a global event. This was not just the United States. These were banks abroad. These were ATM machines here and abroad, banks in the United States, television stations went off the air. I mean, it goes on and on. You'll be reading about it for a while. And of course, CrowdStrike took a hit, a big one. I think it was down 16% at one point here and Microsoft down. So you see how these things are going. Microsoft today down $3. Okay, I don't think that's a terrible drop, but we're gonna cover uh, uh, this in a few minutes. ARM got a bid on it today. If you look at the screen, there's not a lot of things that got bids. The dollar was strong, UNG coming up, and I thought that the market was bottoming in the 1380s, and I had clients that I told to come out. Uh, KREF looks to me as the own market that uh, wants to give you a little bit more of a rally there. Why? Well, aren't you going to save the banks with lower interest rates? I do think so. I mean, even the regional banks, I read a detailed study uh, yesterday as to how they're building their reserves so that they're not going to be absolutely hurt as this bad real estate hits them. They're the ones most vulnerable with it. It keeps hitting, but the buyers do show up at very discounted prices, sometimes 50, 60 percent down. And, you know, the bank does what it has to. It gets what it can out of the deal. The, the investors are wiped out and away you go. When we look at CrowdStrike, how do you get away from saying this is one heck of a correction? You, for all purposes, have gone from 400 to 300 in two weeks. These were markets that had high valuations and suddenly they're punished. The biggest problem for CrowdStrike is what do its long-term clients do? Elon Musk said they're abandoning CrowdStrike over this. That hurts. Um, Where's it going to go? One of those second tier companies? I'm not saying that they might not be able to do the job, but they're not a crowd strike. I think the PR on crowd strike was excellent. They wasted no time. It's our fault. I give them 10 star on that. They didn't have to wait too long to get to that point. Let me bring you back to where that was so we, we can see it. So fill the gap in the chart. Gaps like to be filled. Where's the market going? Well, it's not trending. You just pulled the plug on a bull condition and you see that with a higher high, lower low. This is called a swing line. And what a swing line easily does is it connects this brown line to prior days high or low. So you always look back, all right? So when the market opens this week, is it gonna be the line going up or down? I know the rules, but you have to learn them by taking the course. So right now, I call this void of a trend. We're in a correction. The market sliced right through on the correction, the 18-day average, and we know why. We, we know that the panic hit the marketplace and away you go. Where's the market likely to stop? Well, I think the first logical spot, if it continues the down move, is probably the 272 area. Now that's certainly, if you take a look at where the year began, you were right about there. You've already taken out most of the year's earnings. That's my point. Does the company deserve that? Well, it depends, you know. Got to look at w which way it is. Was it overvalued to begin with, riding with all these companies that have gotten a little nutty in price earnings and so on in tech to a degree? Is it a uh, chip company? No. So it's different. So software is different to a degree than what these chips are. So we've got to keep our eye on it, but it is a warning that things do have a way of getting ahead of themselves. What else? Trees don't go and grow through the sky. It doesn't happen. And this is a market that came and you have to understand, back a year ago, it was $150. It went up to 400 
And sometimes when you pull the plug, these things correct fast. In terms of momentum, it is turned down. So is there a reason to rush out and buy it? As a chartist, the answer is no. I think you have to let the dust settle to see where it's at as a chartist. When I look at RSP, I want to keep this up there because I like to look at the S&P equal weight. And I'm going to come back just a, a week on it. You can see this easy. This is a market that has got sideways action. It's had it since this peak here, and it kept coming back to the 100-day average in the red. And if it goes up, it's been peaking at the upper Bollinger Band, the black line. You tell me it didn't do that again. This isn't bearish action. This is action of rotation. So we've seen a certain amount of rotation out of the important seven big tech companies into broader based, and that's bullish the stock market as a whole. I still like the market. So on pullbacks, I'm still looking at 165.22 as the potential for the support. From here, that's about $3 lower. In Eli Lilly, look what happened this week. This is a market down 10%. This is the darling drug company, and it lost the bullish embedded reading. So for my work, I think you're going to come down where the red line, and it'll go up a little this week. I think price and the 18-week uh, average are coming together. My point is... We were running to the moon. We started the year 5,200 and the S&P was the first objective. Then 54, then traders were going 56 and now they're up to 6,000. It can't keep going indefinitely. You stop along the way. I don't think anything's changed in Lilly. I, I think that you buy the best in all these industries for the long term, but it stepped out of this, there might be a better opportunity. In Dell, Dell hasn't done well since the chip companies went up and then they kept saying, oh, Dell's, all the numbers were great and so on. Again, the problem, you were a $50 stock. You went up triple and you're getting a correction. That's what's going on. I don't think it has huge downside in any manner but it's got downside potential. You'd have to get back and take out the 150.20 area in order to tell me this correction has pretty much run its course. In ARM, this is getting more coverage and people are liking what they're seeing. Again, if the red line closes under, under 79, I'd be worried. Until it does, you can keep going up and butting against that upper Bollinger Band. We need more data there for the chart to be better. It's a new listing. In Meta, so Meta is caught in the Bollinger Bands too. Look at the sideways action. You tell me you don't see it, it's, it's clear. And what of this market do? Every one of these in a bull market came from a valuation and for all purposes, they doubled or tripled. You were here in the October, November. The market went up just now, gets into a doubling of price and you're getting a correction, okay. That does not mean that this bull run long term is over. It does mean in the short term, short term, the bull run is over. You broke the pattern, and let's come back if I could get this to do it. I'll show it to you right here. You broke the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. So if you come back through this low, which you did, that ends it. You've, you've finished this pattern off right now and you've got to do more consolidation or breaking in the market. None of these, in my opinion, we're looking at are buys right here. In KRE, the regional banking, why did this take off? Save your time, save your interest rates falling. You're not at 6.18 in, in some of the rates anymore. And in the 10 year, you're not over 5%. You went down this week to 418. This is a savior for these smaller banks, these regional banks. Uh, number one, they don't have to pay out as much on interest. They're still attracting money to them. They're still paying good, but not as much. And this means maybe some of their exposure that they've been putting money away from 
gets a chance to not be as much exposure. I don't think the commercial real estate's gonna turn on a dime here, don't get me wrong. But I think the market has absorbed a lot of the problem and it's no longer what it was in terms of problems. MCHI China, I am just plain out bearish. First time you heard me saying that. You're under the 18 day average for the first time. I would not be surprised to get to 3810. It's not a big move. It's, uh, you know, from here it's 10% more. I can see that. Why would it go up? What have they done? They've got to come out and say something positive and give you a game plan for their economy to pick up. They're not doing it. They're not doing anything about helping their own trade war. They think that the, their goods should be allowed in. They overproduce and they want to dump them elsewhere. Well, they can. They just can't do it in Europe and America. And that is what their problem is going to be. And if Trump gets in, it's going to get worse, not better. You know that. I know that. So they have to figure out their other markets. And that's what they're doing. They have to figure a way out of that. In XLI, the industrial sector. So why did it go up? And of course, to see a failure at the upper band on the first hit of it makes all the sense. It's going up because lower interest rates will spur on their business. And we're starting to see as the different regions are coming out, beige books, we're starting to see the first signs that the cost pressures are coming off and yet price pressures, they, they don't have a lot of pricing power, but they don't need it here if interest rates are slipping on and they'll pick up monies in other ways. So that's, I think, what's going on there. On the energy sector, okay. Uh, eventually, this turns into a positive. But right now, because China's in so much pain, you can't be in the copper, you can't be in the oils just yet. They're the big consumer of them. And there's only so much they can consume if uh, Europe and America are putting tariffs and they're doing less trade with them in different ways. Now, if they can find trading partners and get help from Russia, Iran, other parts of the world, Africa, terrific. But a lot of these are non-paying partners. So it's not the same as getting the West, which are the big consumers. When we, and by the way, we're not shutting off everything China brings us. It's selective industries. And they're not shutting off total imports from the West either, but they are cutting back. You can see how the market is fighting a battle in the dollar index. It found support at a combination of the 18 week average and the 100. But you have a funny market here. You've got momentum pointing down. The trend is up until you get and close under that 18 week and you haven't done it. In the gold market, to me, this break in GLD makes all the sense. Uh, it got up to the upper band. Yes, the market is what got here on the long-term chart? Lower, low, higher, high. A problem. It could fall back. It could fall back into the 215, 220 area for support again. Wouldn't surprise me. Why not? In the copper market, I'm just not friendly. I could see it coming down even more. Again, 50% of the world consumption is China. And it's fighting with everybody. And don't get me wrong, they're building cars like there's no tomorrow. Don't get me wrong, they're building batteries like there's no tomorrow. And they're selling them. They're selling them abroad and within China. And I get it, all right? But remember, what they sell them for in China is a very different price for the same thing as to what they sell it abroad for. And that becomes the problem. You raise a tariff to keep them out of the market. And they're keeping them out of the market because that subsidized car at $10,000 by the Chinese government, it now has to become a $50,000. I'm, I'm making this up, but I'm not far off. Uh, a $40,000, a $30,000 car here. And of course, in America, you don't see Chinese cars. Tell me, any of you, where's your dealership for a Chinese car? Is it around your corner? You want to go to another city and tell me where it's at? So you can see what it's done. So you put it all together. I like playing with this sometimes and showing you the different chart pages I use and they are good. All right, so I wanna bring up a point. In the mornings, if you're an ETF trader or a futures trader, I start you off with a futures video first thing in the morning and it's futures first. Number one, the stock market doesn't open and for Chicago time till 8.30 in the morning, futures go typically 23 hours a day. 
a lot of the ETFs you buy are based on this. The charts we're gonna look at will look just like this. They're gonna have five studies on them, moving averages, swing lines, Bollinger Bands, window envelopes, slow stochastics. And we discuss how they come about and we'll flip flop back and forth between daily and weekly charts. We're looking for patterns and you're gonna have plenty of trades that don't work out. That's, we're traders, not investors, all right? There's a difference. So. That's the idea, but when they work out, boy, do they work out, and that's the key. Uh, and you wanna keep the losses tight, let the market give you a run, and trade it along the way up, and from time to time, you keep it, like NVIDIA. You know, I have my, uh, my subscribers in since December, the current round, so that's seven months. You know what it's done in that time frame. You can see it by going to irapstein.com to research. Move your cursor up to the top here. You'll see an icon. It's simple. You can take it for as little as 30 days to try it out. You can buy a one-year subscription at a big discount. Your choice. I'm Ira. I will catch up with you all come Monday. Have a great weekend.